Hello, hope you're doing well today. So, I have a question for you. Why is it that you you know that you have something to do, you know there's something you're supposed to be doing, and you're not doing it? Do you know why? That's that's the real question. Do you know why? Because I guarantee you, there is a why. And if you can figure out that why, excuse the bells, my nan's cat. She's lovely, look. <laughs> so, if you can figure out that why, you'll be able to understand what it, what action you need to take to be able to start moving towards actually doing that goal that you that you want to do. So, um, got a, I got a quote in the description. This is a quote from Jordan Peterson. Uh, I think he's great. He's he's really he's really helped me a lot. Um, and the quote goes, "You're a terrible boss, and you're an an even worse employee." So, what does this what does this mean? So, what he's saying here is. You're a terrible boss because, so you as a person, you're a boss, like you are your own boss and you're also your own employee. So you're a terrible boss because you're a tyrant. You just tell yourself what you want yourself to achieve. You say, oh, I need to sit down and study for eight hours straight. And, oh, you need to do all of these things that you that you don't like. And it's like you, you, you rule yourself like a tyrant. You just tell yourself these are the things you have to do and you expect yourself to do them. And then you're an even worse employee. So it's like you've told yourself what it is that you want to do and you don't do any of it. You just you just can't be bothered. You don't do anything. So you set yourself these unrealistic goals and you don't even take a single step towards them because they're just so unachievable. So to really understand what's going on here, we have to identify the, the boss stage and the employee stage and make, and make both of these more reasonable. So instead of being a tyrant and telling yourself that you've got to achieve a massive goal... Talk with yourself. Have these two different parts of yourself. Have the boss self and the employee self. Have a discussion. And this is this is something you actually have to sit down and do. Like you literally have to sit down and have a discussion with yourself. And this might look something like, well, I've got final exams coming up soon. I need to sit down and I need to study for them because these are important because these determine where I'm going for for the rest of my life. Or I've got this project. So me, for example, I'll give you I'll give you a first world example because I always talk about what's going on in my life and this is why I'm talking about these things. So I have a course that I need to make. So my boss tyrant self says, look, you've got this this job to do, like get off your ass, do it. Just just do the work. And it's unrealistic because my employee self says, I actually don't feel that good today. Um, I've got some pain. I've got a trigger point in my shoulder. I don't really feel very productive. I don't feel like recording classes. I'd rather do some something else, some, some more creative work. And it's about having this dialogue so I realised this tyrannical part of myself this terrible boss is saying like do this, do this, do that and it's like okay let's calm that down what would be realistic what's a realistic goal today it's like well I'd actually be happy if I just did some work like it doesn't really have to be that work that I had intended it's it's not that important if I could sit down with myself and just say let's do something productive and let's talk with this employee part and see what the employee part feels like doing so I sit down and I have this discussion okay I've the boss part's like okay we're working today what are we doing employees employee part says well I don't really feel that good I've got a really bad trigger point in my shoulder and I do and it's giving me a really bad headache and it's horrible and this is why it's important to listen to this part because it, it doesn't want to work so it said well I don't really feel like working so let's just not do any work for now let's just lay down and rest so I just lay down and had a little rest and it was like mm, okay and as I lay down and rest, the creative juices begin to flow. And I'm like, hmm, I could, I could do some, some stuff today. I don't feel like standing up in front of a camera because that's going to make my trigger point hurt. But I can, I can sit down and do a live and talk about this experience. That'd be okay. And then as soon as I decided I wasn't going to do this class, one of, my, one of my clients reached out to me and said, look, I'm having a bit of a hard time today. And I was like, hmm, now that I've just said no to this, this new opportunity has just arrived on my lap. So I was like, okay. How do you want a, a free bonus session so we can just go through this and, and I want to help you walk, walk you through this. So we had a free, I gave him a free bonus session and we walked through some really cool thing. I won't, I won't go into details. So then I ended up doing that instead. And that to me feels way more fulfilling than actually having done the things that I had intended to do anyway. And yeah, there's, I've got deadlines, I've got pressure on myself, but ultimately it doesn't really matter. These are just deadlines that I put on myself. It doesn't. It's that tyrannical boss part. It's like, oh, you have to do this. Oh, you have to do that. And then the employee's like, well, watch me. Watch me not do anything and see what happens. It's almost, it's almost comical when you can see these, this, this, these things happening within yourself. How little control you actually have over your ability to, to make yourself do the things that you want to do. So how can we, 
How can we recalibrate? How can we make it so that the, the boss part and the employee part are actually sort of working together on the same team and actually make it so that you start doing things that you want to do? So first of all, you have to acknowledge that these different parts of you have valuable insight for you. They have a very valuable message and you have to figure out what it is they're trying to tell you. And bulldozing a certain part does not get you anywhere because then this part that you bulldoze past is going to manifest subconsciously as procrastination or you're just going to realize, oh, I've been watching cat videos for 10 hours or an hour, 10 minutes. Or something, something will come up and it, it will get its need met. So if you can consciously identify this need and meet it through your work so for me it was i don't feel like doing classes i want to do something a bit more laid back i want to do something a bit more open and i want to do something that's that feels like it's flowing whereas doing these courses and this rigid stuff feels really grindy like i have to just kind of get on with it and do it the thing is i know if i'm in the right mindset and i'm in the right mood this will flow and i'll enjoy doing it and this is this is me this is sort of my inner part saying now isn't the time to do this if you do this now it's not going to be as good as if you would have done it another time so just wait and i just took that pressure off myself immediately and i just went into flow and it's like okay what can i do now oh let's do a call with this oh let's schedule a call with this lady oh let's do this this live video and now i'm feeling like way better about the whole situation i'm feeling productive i'm actually doing stuff and it feels more fulfilling and i'm actually i've actually realized that just forcing myself to do these these classes these courses that i didn't actually want to do right now it's actually better if i don't do them because if i do them later i'll do them differently and they'll be of higher quality so all of these self-sabotaging behaviors or procrastinations these are just a part of you that is telling you that you need to do something it's it's trying to get your attention it's trying to make you focus on something sometimes these behaviors are protective so say for example you know you need to you hate your job you absolutely hate your job you want to quit you hate your boss he's a dick you just want to you just want to pack up pack your bags and leave but you can't because you've got family to support you've got you've got responsibility so you can't do that well the the action you really need to take in this situation is you need to get your cv together you need to start applying to interviews and and to new jobs so you're actually in a position where you can negotiate and say, look, boss, you're horrible. I don't like it when you treat me like this. I need a raise, blah, blah, blah. But if you're not in this empowered position where you can say no and you can walk away, you can't, you can't negotiate. You can't negotiate if you can't say no. So what you need to do is take action and start doing these things, get your CV put together. But if you don't have capacity to do this, so say, for example, to put your CV together, it requires quite a high level of self-confidence and self-belief. You have to believe that you've actually achieved things in your life. You're basically, this is like an advert, you're selling yourself. So if you've got really low self-worth, any time that you go to to write this, your, your body is going to pull you away from this. It's going to say, look, there's feelings of low self-worth here that we don't even want to touch on. Like We don't have the capacity to feel these depths of despair and this these, hot, these, these emotions that we just can't handle. So we're just never going to let you do it and you just procrastinate it forever. And until you build enough emotional capacity to actually go in and feel these emotions, you'll constantly just self-sabotage. So building emotional capacity, in my experience, and in the experience of... So anybody that I do shadow work with, so shadow work is the stuff where we're looking at, well, why are you not doing the things that you want to do in your life? If you don't have enough emotional capacity, there's nothing you can do apart from build that capacity. Otherwise, you will just self-sabotage and self-sabotage and self-sabotage. And there's, there's, there's no way around it. So focusing on building that capacity is the most important first step. But once you've got the capacities there, you have to understand that this, this behavior that you have, this aversion to doing what it is you want to do, is simply another part of yourself, maybe of your subconscious that you're not even aware of, coming to the surface and saying, like, we have other needs that we need to meet that aren't being met by doing this activity. So until you meet these needs, we're just going to meet them subconsciously and then you procrastinate. So a very common one for procrastination is actually the need to rest. So you just, again, you're a, you're a tyrant. You just rule yourself like a tyrant. Just work and work and work like you're a slave. You need to rest. So if you don't actually consciously give yourself time to rest, how does this manifest? Well, you procrastinate because in these times of procrastination, it's like a, a form of forced recovery.
So if you actually then identify, oh, I'm procrastinating doing this because I actually need to rest, actively say, okay, I'm going to stop doing this for two hours. I'm going to go and do some, I'm going to go and have some rest. And then that needs to be met. And then you come back and you're like, oh, I'm productive naturally. And you don't have one energy going this way, one energy going this way, and like an energy going here and another one down here. Like you're all going the same direction. And it just, it, not only is it, way easier to do because all the energy is going the same way it doesn't require as much willpower to push it that direction you get better results as well because this is what being in alignment is all about so here comes lily there you are here you are come on <laughs> she's lovely she loves getting stroked on her on her back near her butt she goes absolutely crazy um so yeah i just wanted to share this this is an experience that i just had myself um and as I said, I just a part of me wanted to make this video. So here it is. I hope it's been really helpful. I hope it I hope when every time I make one of my one of these videos, I, I always imagine that a lot of people don't like or comment or engage in my content, but they see it. Like one of my more popular videos, the one about liver load, it's got like nearly four thousand views. I don't I don't know who saw those. I don't know who saw that, but I really hope it changed somebody's life. Like if four thousand people saw it and one person got some insight from it and changed the di direction of their life. That video was worth making. So even if this video gets like 20 views, 30 views, and no one comments or no one engages or anything, but you get some insight and it changes the direction of your life, it was totally worth it. So I really hope this helped you. I really hope that um, this has made some positive impact on your life and it was worth it for me to, for me to make this. So um, yeah, that's everything. I'll see you soon. Bye.